Vision 5 The Synagogue After this, I saw the image of a woman, pale from her head to her navel and a black from her navel to her feet her feet were red, and around her feet was a cloud of purest whiteness. She had no eyes, and had put her hands in her armpits she stood next to the altar that is before the eyes of God, but she did not touch it. And in her heart stood Abraham, and in her breast Moses, and in her womb the rest of the prophets, each displaying his symbols and admiring the beauty of the church. She was of great size, like the tower of a city, and had on her head a circlet like the dawn. And again I heard the voice from heaven saying to me, On the people of the Old Testament God placed the austerity of the law in enjoining circumcision on Abraham which he then turned into sweet grace when he gave his son to those who believed in the truth of the gospel, and anointed with the oil of mercy those who had been wounded by the yoke of the law. 1. The synagogue is the mother of the incarnation of the Son of God. Therefore you see the image of a woman, pale from her head to her navel she is the synagogue, which is the mother of the incarnation of the Son of God. From the time her children began to be born until their full strength she foresaw in the shadows the secrets of God, but did not fully reveal them. For she was not the glowing dawn who speaks openly, but gazed on the latter from afar with great admiration and alluded to her thus in the Song of Songs. 2. Words of Solomon Who is this who comes up from the desert, flowing with delights and leaning upon her beloved? Which is to say, who is this new bride, who with many good works comes up through the deserts of the pagans, who reject God's lawful precepts and adore idols, and ascends to heavenly desires, abounding in the delights of the gifts of the Holy Spirit, panting with great zeal and leaning on her spouse, the Son of God, for it is she who blooms with the resplendent virtues given her by the Son of God and flows with brooks of scripture. And the same synagogue, lost in admiration of the children of this new bride, speaks thus by my servant the prophet Isaiah. 3. Words of Isaiah the prophet. Who are these who fly like clouds, and like doves to their windows? Isaiah 60 verse 8, that is to say, who are these who, withdrawing themselves in mind from earthly and fleshly desires, fly full of desire and devotion to heavenly things, and with the simplicity of doves and without the bitterness of gall fortify their senses and with the great ardor of virtue seek the protection of that firm rock that is the only begotten of God? For these are they who in supernal love tread underfoot earthly kingdoms and seek heavenly ones. The synagogue therefore was marveling at the church, for she knew herself not to be adorned with those virtues she foresaw in her for the church is surrounded by angelic guardians to keep the devil from harming her and casting her down, while the synagogue, deserted by God, lies in vice. 4. On the varying color of the synagogue. That is why you see her black from her navel to her feet, for from the time of her fullest strength to the end of her time she was soiled by deviation from the law and by transgression of the heritage of her fathers, for she disregarded the divine precepts in many ways and followed the pleasures of the flesh. Her feet are red, and around her feet is a cloud of purest whiteness for at the end of her time she killed the prophet of prophets and therefore slipped and fell down herself while at the same time a most clear and acute faith arose in the minds of believers for as the synagogue ended, the church arose, when after the death of the Son of God the apostolic doctrine spread throughout the world. 5. Her blindness, and why the prophets stand within her. That image has no eyes, and has put her hands in her armpits for the synagogue did not look on the true light since she held the only begotten of God in despite, and she conceals the works of justice under the apathy of her laziness, remaining in her torpor and negligently hiding them as if they did not exist. She stands next to the altar that is before the eyes of God, but she does not touch it for she did in fact know superficially the law of God, 
which she received by divine precept and divine visitation. But she did not plumb its depths, for she shrank from it rather than loved it, neglecting the sacrifice and the incense of devout prayers to God. And in her heart stands Abraham, for he was the beginning of circumcision in the synagogue, and in her breast Moses, for he brought the divine law into human hearts, and in her womb the rest of the prophets, that is. They stand in that tradition that was given them by God as observers of the divine precepts each displaying his symbols and admiring the beauty of the church for they displayed the miracles of their prophecies by marvelous symbols and with great wonder waited for the noble beauty of the new bride. 6. That she is as great as a tower and has a circlet like the dawn. The synagogue is of great size like the tower of a city because she received the greatness of the divine laws and so foreshadowed the bulwarks and defenses of the noble and chosen city. And she has on her head a circlet like the dawn, because she prefigured in her rising the miracle of God's only begotten foreshadowed the bright virtues and mysteries that followed. For she was crowned, as it were, early in the morning, when she received the divine precepts, following Adam, who at first accepted God's commands, but afterward by his transgressions fell into death. So also did the Jews, who originally submitted to the divine law, but then in their unbelief rejected the Son of God. But as humanity in the last days will be snatched from the perdition of death by the death of God's only begotten, so too the synagogue, stirred up by divine clemency, will before the last day abandon her, unbelief and truly attain to the knowledge of God. How is this? Does not the dawn rise before the sun? But the dawn recedes, and the sun's brightness remains. How is this? The Old Testament receded, and the truth of the gospel remains for what the early people observed in the flesh in legal rites the new people of the New Testament practice in the spirit, and what the former showed in the flesh, the latter perfect in the spirit. For circumcision has not passed away, because it has been transformed into baptism as the older race was marked in one member, the newer race is marked in all its members. Hence the old precepts have not passed away but are transformed into better ones and in the last times the synagogue will also transform itself faithfully into the church. For, O oh synagogue, when you were wandering in many iniquities, polluting yourself with Baal and the others, shamefully breaking the custom of the law and lying naked in your sins, I did what my servant Ezekiel tells of, when he says. 7. Words of Ezekiel I spread my garment over you and covered your shame and I swore to you, and I entered into a covenant with you, Ezekiel 16 verse 8. Which is to say, I, the Son of the Most High, in the will of my Father have spread my incarnation over you, O synagogue, to save you, taking away your sins, which you have committed in many times of forgetfulness I have promised you the remedy of salvation showing you the ways of my covenant for it when I made known to you by apostolic doctrine the true faith, so that you might obey my precepts as a wife ought to submit to the power of her husband. For I have taken from you the harshness of the exterior law and given you the sweetness of spiritual doctrine and in it shown you all my mysteries in myself, but you have deserted me, who am just, and allied with the devil. 8. Analogy of Samson Saul and David. But, O oh human, understand that Samson's wife left him, and so he was deprived of his eyesight, and the synagogue likewise forsook the Son of God, spurning him stubbornly and rejecting his doctrine. But later, when his hair grew again, as the Church of God was strengthened the Son of God in his might overthrew the synagogue and deprived her children, who were crushed by God's jealousy by means of pagans who did not know God. For she had undergone many errors of confusion and discord, and polluted herself by wicked transgressions. But as David at last called back the wife he had first married, but who had polluted herself with another man, so also the Son of God at the end of time will call back the synagogue, 
which had first been joined to him in his incarnation but had rejected the grace of baptism and followed the devil, and she will forsake the errors of unbelief and return to the light of truth. For the devil drew the synagogue away in her blindness, and gave her over to error and unbelief and he will not cease to do this until the coming of the son of perdition. But the latter will fall in the exaltation of his pride as Saul fell, slain on Mount Gilboa, after driving David out of his land as the son of iniquity will try to drive out my son and his elect. But my son, when the Antichrist has been cast out, will call back the synagogue to the true faith, as David took back his first wife after the death of Saul for at the end of time the people will see the one who deceived them conquered and run back with great haste to the way of salvation. For it was not fitting for the truth of the gospel to precede the shadow of the law, as it is fitting that fleshly things should precede and spiritual things should follow the servant announces his master's coming, and the master does not go before the servant to serve him. So too the synagogue went before as a foreshadowing sign, and the church came after in the light of truth. Therefore whoever has knowledge in the Holy Spirit and wings of faith, let this one not ignore my admonition, but taste it, embrace it, and receive it in his soul.